What's up YouTubers, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. For today's video, we're checking out the power of understanding your three octave scales. So let's go. So like the previous scene mentioned, today's video is all focused on three octave scale. What does that mean? If you're used to playing your scales like this, let's say with the key of A major. How can we do that? But three octaves. Three octave scales for me were a big game changer because it opened up the fretboard totally. So where I see, instead of small playing fields, I see one giant playing field at my disposal on the instrument. Essentially, if you're looping a chord progression and soloing in one area and having your tendencies, in a perfect world, through understanding three octave scales, the whole guitar you have at your disposal. And by doing that, you open yourself up to more, you know, more use of dynamics, different melodies, different phrasing, etc. And as cool as that sounds, getting there, you know, might be not the most sexy. Yes, you can probably find diagrams on the internet about what route you can do, which is great. But I would rather give you the tools to help you understand how the building blocks are made, you know? So the first understanding you should understand <laughs> is the caged system because that already is breaking up the major scale into five small playing fields on the instrument. So again, let's be in the key of A for today. Our notes in A major being A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, right? Our G shape, E shape, our D shape, our C shape, and our A shape. Excuse the excess noise outside. So the cage shape, like mentioned, breaks the guitar down into five playing fields, which is great. And by understanding those will lead you to our second, I guess, stepping stone, which is two octaves. Not the way that we're thinking, like if we're doing two octaves in our E shape, More so two octaves where we're combining shapes. So check this out. Let's combine our G shape and our E shape. And it's super simple. How about that? So on our G shape, we climbed up to the sixth, the F sharp. One, two, three, four, five, six. Shifted, G sharp, A. Now we're in our E shape. And the second octave comes from our E shape. How 
how can we combine now our E shape and our D shape? Same idea. One octave in our E shape, shift it to the B, second octave, in our D shape. How can we combine our D shape and our C shape? Easy, right? A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Our first octave, B, C sharp, D, there's our shift. E, F sharp, G sharp, A. It's not life-changing idea, but it is opening up one shift to change positions, which I think for a lot of us out there is or was a barrier to pass on the instrument. Now, when it comes to three octaves, you're essentially doing the same thing, but adding one more octave, right? Now, instead of saying, how do I get from here to maybe here, how do I get from here to here? That's one way. Another way could be Another way can be A fourth way can be The fun thing with three octaves is you can create your own route. There is no right or wrong, wrong way to get from here to up here, right? As long as you're going up the scale sequentially, it's all fair game. You can even do something like this. Mind you, you're essentially playing one full octave on the high E string, but if that's what it takes to start, that's perfectly fine. And remember, what you practice going up, you must practice coming down. And slowly, whether it's a week, two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, by just implementing that into your practice routine, the whole fingerboard opens up. Once you understand major scale, then you can go to minor scale modes. Let's say we want to do mixolydian. Same thinking takes place. What's my route to get from my lowest A to my highest A? Pentatonics, the same thing. Start by understanding your five pentatonic shapes. Start by doing, you know, two octaves with a shift. Something like that. And then you can go three octaves. And slowly but surely, over time, through practice, thorough practice, understanding what's being done on the instrument while you're doing this as opposed to that movement, 
the whole guitar will be one big playing field at your disposal. And that's the power of understanding three octave scales. Well, all right, guys, that is today's video on the power of understanding your three octave scales. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.